Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about tips and tricks and how to get started if you're looking for solar panels to your house, so those tips and tricks are coming up. So before you even start talking to installers, what you want to do is understand how much energy your house uses. Uh, and you can figure this out by going to your utility company and they should have stats on this where you can pull it by year is how you want to look at it. Everybody's usage is different. And so any installer, what they're going to do is they're going to customize the system based on your usage and to 100% or maybe 105 to 100 110% offset your usage yearly. And it's really not hard to do this. All they do is basically they take the sun hours of your house and they use a formula compared to what size panels are using in watts to figure out how big of a system they need to put on your roof to give you a 100% offset. And you can pretty easily do this yourself. You can go to a website like Project Sunroof and it'll, it'll actually tell you the sun hours of your house. So I'll leave a link in the description to that site. You also don't want to oversize your system more than 110% from an ROI perspective. So basically it's not really worth it to oversize the system that much from a payback perspective because it's just going to take you too long to basically make back that money if you oversize it that much. You also want to think about future electricity purchases. Uh, the big one is usually an EV. So if you don't have an EV now and you're thinking about getting one, put that into your estimate. That way you can offset it when you once you get the EV. Most installers today will give you two options on how you want to set up the system, either a string inverter setup or a microinverter setup. The string inverter setup is exactly what it sounds like. So basically all the panels are hooked up to one box and if that box dies, then your entire system is going to be down until it's fixed. Another issue that string inverters have are with shading. And so basically if there's a tree or a branch that's on one of the panels, your entire string, so basically all your panels are going to be down that much percentage. So it could be 50% or something like that, which is not good. For the string inverter setup, there is a fix for the shading issues, which uh, there's a unit called a power optimizer, which basically you put on each panel. And if shading hits one panel with the power optimizers, you don't lose like 50% with the entire string. You only lose that 50% on that one panel. But the problem is all that energy is still going into that one inverter box. So your problem is still there where if that inverter box dies, your entire system is down. The power optimizers don't help you in that situation. If you go with the Solar Edge central inverter, make sure that the inverter can hook up to Wi-Fi. So there are some models where basically they only do 3G and that uh, expense is actually built into the contract where basically it talks to the cell towers just like your phone, which is not a good uh, thing because basically it's a set prepaid card that expires at some point. On the flip side, microinverters are kind of the opposite, where basically each panel has a microinverter instead of one inverter hooked up to all your panels. So in that case, if one of your panels dies, your system is still running just without that one panel until it's fixed. So I like that flexibility that if one panel dies or there's shading on one panel, you're still getting production from the other panels and it's not as big a deal to be out uh, that one panel because you're only going to be losing a little bit of production instead of all your production. Who you go with is also going to really matter. So there are national companies like Tesla or Sunrun or SunPower, or you can go with a local installer. So for something like this, I would much rather pay a little bit more money with a local installer to get really good customer service because setting up solar panels at your house is not a very easy thing. It's actually a complicated process and there's a lot of steps. So if you're going to go with a national company, yeah, it might be cheaper, but then you have to fight them with the customer service and it's just not going to be pretty to do that. I do have another video on the actual full process that I went through. So I'll link you in the cards there. And like I said, it's actually kind of complicated and it's sort of a long process, even when it's smooth. When you start looking for quotes for solar panels, you definitely want to use a site like energysage.com where you can compare prices with all your local installers and then you can get the best price that way. So the going rate right now is about $3 a watt for solar panels. And if you live in California, mine was a little bit more than that because everything is overpriced here. So if you're in another part of the country like the Midwest or somewhere where standard living is cheaper, definitely shoot for under $3 a watt to get solar panels. And by far the best price you're going to get is if you pay cash for the entire system. But obviously these things are kind of expensive. They can be upwards of $15,000. And so not everybody can afford that. 
So if you're going to get a loan, I would recommend getting a personal loan with a fixed rate rather than doing like a PPA or something like that or a loan through your solar company. Because if you do a loan through a solar company, they're going to pretty much try and rip you off or throw in origination fees, which drive up the price of the entire system. Since solar is the new hot thing these days, there are a ton of companies that offer solar panels, including REC, Panasonic, LG, and Hanwha, and more. I have Hanwha Q-cells on my roof, and they are a very popular panel because they are a really good mix of quality and affordability. Watch out for the warranties for the products that they're putting on your roof. So the standard warranty is 25 years. Anything less than that, I wouldn't accept, and I would probably go with a different installer. Same thing with the workmanship as well. It should be 25 years from your installer, uh, but you do need to be careful though, uh, since there are a lot of small businesses that do this, the local installer is what we call them, make sure you pick one that you think is doing really well because in 10 years if they're out of business, then you're kind of going to be SOL if you need warranty work. Make sure your installer is properly licensed. So they should have a General B building license, which is a general construction license. They should also have a C46 solar license, C10 electrical license, and C20 HVAC license. So once you've looked at all these different things, you should be ready to sign a contract with the local installer and feel good that you're not going to get ripped off. If you've picked the right installer, the install should be really smooth, the customer service should be really good, and it should only take you about two months to get the entire process from signing to PTO, permission to operate, done. And then after that, enjoy your solar and enjoy the many, many years of free energy you're going to get putting up those upfront costs to get the system installed. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.